Welcome to part two of our Rio Araguaia video. Now we are going to have a look what else is here besides the Biotodoma. If you've missed part one, make sure to have a look at the link at the bottom in the description. It is now we spot some movement to the right. Some tiny dwarf pike cichlids are also having an argument. This is likely a new undescribed crinicicla related to Crinicicla regani. The dorsal fins of the females have a spectacular pattern of orange, red, and white with several dark spots. The bellies of the females ready to breed also have bright orange. The males are somewhat larger but less impressively colored and lack the beautiful markings in the dorsal fin. Until a pair is formed to breed, the females have these running battles to establish territories. Once a pair has formed, they will lay eggs under a log or leaf and closely guard their young. This beautiful small fish seems to occur only in this color, in this area, in this tiny river in the upper Araguaia. This group of Prinicicla regani and the related species contains a number of yet unnamed fish. <laughs> this shallow water flood zone is only a few days old because the seasonal rain has started and the main river has gone several meters over the banks. Tetras and cichlids are now migrating into this area to breed. Food is abundant here and the new aquatic vegetation is ideal for their eggs and defending their young. But the predators soon follow. The first are these wolffish that stalk the shallow water looking to feed on the small fish that are now in abundance. At this size, they are also territorial and looking to nest once the plants are so thick that they break the surface of the water. Until then, they relentlessly attack anything that moves here. There are schools of thousands of penguin tetras, Cyaria obliqua, and this tetra similar to Hemigramus ulrei. There's some safety in numbers, but the wolffish still grab them at a regular pace. The wolffish are curious, often approaching the camera, and it's best not to wiggle your finger when they are close, because they would likely try to test to see if they can swallow it, and their teeth are very sharp. A fallen tree is the nesting site for this pair of heros. The pair has retreated to the backside in very shallow water. Likely because it is easier to defend this territory against the other fish. There are many cichlids here and there is considerable competition for the few caves and hard surfaces that make good nesting sites for cichlids. Exposed to deeper water, the parents are in the sites of the very large blue peacock bass, Cichla piquiti, that roam the main channel of the river. In this relative safety, the heros can rear a spawn of several hundred young until the crenicicla and other predators start to reduce their numbers. In this amazing habitat, there are countless pairs of cichlids now breeding with the onset of the rains. Other fish, so common here in the dry season, are now completely absent in high water. Hufesa brucon amandae or Corydoras araguayensis and others. They have simply vanished and moved to a different sector of the river. I hope you enjoyed the look at this habitat. Make sure to share our video as much as possible and subscribe to this channel.